the yeah. piranha. I was just like, mm, it's a choice. <laughs> it's a anyway, choice again. All right, all right, we, we have a lot of films with a lot of different choices. That's I mean, <laughs> films are a series of choices, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to the Library Grand House. The only thing you need is your library card. I'm Jesse. And I'm Leah. And today we'll be giving you our top five reasons why to watch the 1978 film Piranha. Or is it Piranha? Piranha. She's like, what are you doing? I don't know. Why are you throwing the, the wavy accent on this thing? Like, I. Piranha travel in schools, and we brought heavy doses of Rotan on 235. Like yeah. Piranha. I was just like, mm, it's a choice. <laughs> it's a anyway, choice again. All right, all right, we have a lot of films with a lot of different choices. That's I mean, <laughs> films are a series of choices, I guess. <laughs> Filming and film and filmmaking. All right, Leah, but first, why don't you hit him with that spoiler free plot summary? <clears throat> the saying, people eat fish, fish don't eat people, couldn't be more wrong when thousands of military created killer piranhas are accidentally and foolishly released into a river on what appears to be a warm, eventful summer day. So jump in into this treat of a classic, but remember to keep your hands out of the water. Everything out of the water, Lynn. <laughs> but especially your hands. I feel like they all started with the hands. Of course. <laughs> Don't you always start with the hands? That's true. That is true. Mm -hmm. speak keep your hand out of the water. Anyway, Leo. Smile, um... we're going public. Smile, we're going public. Hello, Senator. As the guy said. The guy. The guy. I mean, his documentary is literally like that guy or whatever. Um, we'll get to him. Anyway, Leah, what's number five oh, on your list of reasons to boy. watch this particular film, Piranha? Oh, man. Piranha, Piranha. So, how the doctor, the original doctor who was looking over the lab, he was eaten by piranhas, like torn to shreds. They pull him up. His dying scene was pretty great. But there is another shot where none of his clothes are ripped apart. His pants are pristine as he's lying there dead on the raft, having been eaten by piranhas. How much of Kevin McCarthy did you want to see, Leah? <laughs> well, but I was just like, he how? Wasn't swamp thing. Well, <laughs> that is true. That is very true. But <laughs> if he was, it'd be a whole other story. But no, piranhas, I mean, swamp thing could fend off these piranhas. They should have just called him. But seriously, though, like, I, ha I have miracle pants. Like, he was torn to shreds from the bottom. No, everyone they pulled out of the water who looked like they should have been just absolutely De decimated yeah. um, was very was in very good shape. Yeah, I just, but that was like the first one. And I was, it was only a flesh wound. <laughs> I was like, what, what is this? Do the piranhas have like some poison, like some venom in their teeth that they injected that somehow causes a bunch of blood in the water, but then... Yeah, like, those, soak it's it back up. frothing with blood. <laughs> yes. I mean, it is geysers. There's so much blood, <laughs> but there's hardly any cuts. So maybe they just really are good at nicking arteries. Maybe that yeah. is that is that could just very nick. yeah that could very well be true. But yeah, yeah. I mean, they are it is Project Razor Teeth. Razor Teeth. What's Razor Teeth? So, uh, Which is so fun. Why why couldn't they just call it par Project Piranha? Why does that have to be Project Razor Teeth? This isn't a comic book, Leo. We're not going for alliteration here. <laughs> Razor teeth. Sorry, just in that, or no, taser face. I was thinking taser face in Guardians of the Galaxy mm. instead of razor teeth. Yeah. Anywho, what's your number five, Jesse? The camp manager is hilarious. Handicrafts. Handicrafts don't take any nerve, any intestinal fortitude. <laughs> we eat fish, fish don't eat people. Yeah. I mean. Fish? People eat fish, Grogan. Fish don't eat people. He was... The can't be delight. And it just had kind of a character arc. Oh yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed him. I liked the point where like he walks by and people have his picture on a dartboard and he's Understandably. Upset. And oh yes, understandably, of course. But like even I heard people were gonna go swim in this water. Where are they at? <laughs> like <laughs> And she throws a rock right next to him and he's just like, What was that? I think there's kids the across the lake. I'm just like, dude, do you how are your ears doing, bud? Like <laughs> yeah. No hair, no hearing? Like, I don't know. But it's I, okay, because he gets the one jumping piranha. <laughs> he does, and I was like, oh yeah, he bites it. Because I saw this as a kid, and I thought I remember him getting it. But he winds up okay, but he winds up really broken. Yeah. I was like, dang, this dude, like, I mean, 
I don't know. Well, he had his warnings, and he just didn't. I mean, yeah. all those children, it's kind of on him. So kind of, but if you got a call but, in the middle of the night no, from the true. parent of the troublemaker or the camper who you see as a troublemaker, who has a you a dad who has issue, a reputation yeah. for drinking and overreacting and whatever. It's true. I mean, that's hard. Really, really. What all is he going to do? Like, he can't. Am I going to get in the river and? Come around for piranha? I mean, <laughs> I... <sighs> no, it is true. Really, all of this is on Maggie. On on the girl and the and the guy. Like, all of the... If they would never have... Why would you drain... Uh, anyway, I well, don't think it no, Again, anyway. they had no reason to suspect the piranha in the tank. True, but... You don't, I don't know. I don't know. They assumed drowning. In that case, yes, you drain the tank. But yeah. Cool. That was my number five. What's cool. number four, Leah? My number four is Maggie being super good at knocking people out, but keeping them alive. <laughs> she hits so many people in the back of the head, and then it's like, okay, the they're neck. alive. I'm like, Man, yeah, yeah. It's that seems just, like a movie thing where you hit people in the back of the neck to knock them to out. To knock them out. Like, I don't think that's better. No. She like dents a metal, what is that, a canister, whatever she has in her hand. The first time with the doctor, she it dents it. was a brick it. or a rock. I didn't look at what she did. Oh, uh, well, the guy was like, you dented it. And I was like, what? How? How? Is this something that skip tracing agents are like trained to do? Because she's pretty talented at it. He's knocked out, but he's alive. Anyway, what's your number four, Jesse? My number four, the raft suspense sequence. It's a fun idea. It is. That was a really like, good I, one. It was just like, I like how it's like, we read Huck Finn. We thought it'd be cute to build a raft together. And that's really kind of a fun, like, oh, yeah, let's just take that down the river. I kind of bought it. I but I love know. that all the fish were basically just fake fish on a stick. There's something under us. On a stick. <laughs> and... It works way too well. Like, I mean, the quick cutting, like they, they frame it just right. I mean, I, I'm i not mad you at know, it. The fish you know? in the shadows, like, yes, yes. What's my number four? What's your number three, Leah? So my number three is how selective Susie is, who is the daughter of the main guy character, how selective she is on who she is going to save when she is in the raft. She jumps in, well, not jumps in, she's terrified of the water, but she gets on a raft to save people when the piranhas are, you know, thrashing about all of her peers and young children, and she just paddles on right past these children getting eaten by piranhas to save the camp counselor. To be fair. I'm sure that they were mean to her, and the camp counselor was nice. To be, sure. I mean, she was actually, those are probably the only people she was close to in the entire camp, but at the same time, those fools are close to shore. <laughs> yeah, Those counselors are way the heck out there. That is true. In the water. And they needed the most help in terms of they are way out there. I understand. But I just thought it was so funny. The fact that you actually see if, if the director would have been like everyone else kind of get out of the way as if you were already saved or out of the water, that would have been one thing. They actually had like kids like flapping and her like pushing the paddle away from them as she's going. Like hits them with the paddle. And she's paddling away, not come on into the boat or else just to be like, oh, they were already gone or you know what I mean. They're trying to get out or even swimming to the shore. They're like flailing in the water and she's hitting them with the paddle. She tried to get the canoe that could have held more people, <laughs> but she true. could not push the canoe. And so she got this little inflatable and there's no way she could have helped as many people. And she... I understand. It's the comic relief of it all, Jesse. I, it was pretty it, funny. For me, it made sense. It does make sense. I'm not saying I that mean, it does Even though Baldi was getting bit up, he was actually helping kids out of the water for quite a long time. Yeah. And I really appreciate the fact that he seemed to actually care about these kids, even though he kind of acted like a real butt face towards them. He felt like, okay, this dude actually cares because he's getting bit up while he's saving the kids. It was like a Dante's Peak. I'm going to keep pushing this thing yeah. even though I'm melting in this water. Yeah, yeah. You know, thing where it was just like, I thought he was actually going to get it because he... And he does, but I also want to know what he's standing in the water. Water, and like all of his cuts and stuff are on his chest, but he's standing in the water helping the kids. The flying piranha prefer him. But <laughs> the jumping piranha love him. I, I don't know. That's it. That has to be it. Just yeah. He has the blood. He got all the, the jumpers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your number three, Jesse? What about the piranhas? They're eating the guests, sir. I love that line. What about the piranhas? What about the piranhas? They're eating the guests, sir. 
I mean, Dick Miller is delightfully dastardly yes. in this movie. Yes. I love Dick Miller. R.I.P. This dude. I mean, he, he and Joe Dante. I mean, I will agree. I mean, Art Clabs. I mean, obviously Gremlins. He's very as Mr. Futterman. Was it Futterman in that movie? Anyway, whatever his name is in that movie. That whole scene with his assistant, I'm assuming, is great. Like every scene with his Who's assistant. He's wearing like a sailor yeah. like, outfit, like a Commodore outfit <laughs> kind of thing. I feel like his assistant like. Like just, I don't know. And he's got like the suitcase phone thing. I'm just like, this is great. I what a treat. I'm, what a I'm treat. very happy about this. <laughs> All right, Leo. What's your number two? My number two is how tiny the piranhas actually are compared to what I thought they were going to be. I know that I mentioned the eye. I thought it was going to be one giant piranha. Like the title says, it's not called piranhas. It's parada. And then I had to go down, you know, a Google wormhole and see what is the plural of parana? Is it actually parana or is it piranhas? It's piranhas. <laughs> so then how come there are so many you little tiny fish? like fish? No, like a that's, school of piranha? That's what I thought. Oh, maybe. I haven't done a school of. But it's just if you're pluralizing, pluralizing, if you're making the, the plural of piranha is piranhas. I feel like it could be fish. You can say fishes. I guess that is true. There are 100 fishes in this tank. You can say that. It sounds goofy. It sounds really but apparently goofy. Apparently, it's correct, um, technically. So I think piranha is the same way. You could say, like, there are 100 piranha in this tank. 100 piranhas also piranhas. sounds correct. But I feel, so I feel like it could technically Be go either, either way right? on that. I don't know. But I was just, my expectation of this movie was one big giant fish, sort of like Jaws, swimming through and eating people. And this was far better. That's why I'm making it my number two. Gotcha. Having, having You're happier. Thousands, You're happy with this choice. Yes, having millions of thousands of who breathe like, like insects, yeah, who like, breathe uh, like wild, chasing after you, and like it looks like in the water. Which, by the way, the water shots. Cuts. Yeah, the water shots were really gross because I know it was fish food, but like it looked like flesh particles floating after they were eating something. It was really weird and gross, but great. But like them just, I, yeah, I feel like that's more terrifying. Like having. Hundreds of them. You can't fend off. If there was one big switch, oh yeah, like, that poor fish. dude getting his like bottom part of his legs basically yeah. bitten down to the bone, like like. But if you just saw one big fish swimming towards you, I feel like that would not be as scary as like millions of them just like. You know what's scary in Jaws? Imagine if Jaws was tiny and there are a million millions of them. Of them. Yes, like, exactly, yeah. exactly. It'd be like this. Yeah. And it was great, and I was here for it. Like I was totally here for awesome. it. Awesome, awesome. So yes, what's your number two, Jesse? My number two. Joe Dante, Dick Miller, old school star, and Kevin McCarthy from like Invasion of the Body Snatchers even has an apt cartoon and like movie clip thrown in. I mean, it's so Joe Dante. Like, it's really fun to see like in his directorial debut, like him kind of like already having so much of what I associate with a Joe Dante movie. I mean, we already covered Burying the X, and that one had like yes. those film clips that were really apt thrown in and like the nerd cred of like the old school horror stuff. Like it's so it's such a Joe Dante move and it's fun to see it already here in 1978 with his his first movie because he used to like cut trailers for Joe Corm, I Roger Corman films that. and stuff like that. And that's kind of how he got up, started with this. And screenwriter John Sayles, okay. who would go on to be acclaimed for a lot of things, um, screenwriting credit here. So this is one of those instances where Corman actually pumped out like some, some talented some, people yeah. out of his factory. And also someone reading Moby Dick at the resort. I, saw I was that. like, are you kidding me with this? Well, like, I was like, who's reading? And then there was this, the second shot of her reading it when everyone finally starts screaming and she's not paying any attention. Like she's just so into Moby Dick, which I've been happy so on, anything else is happening. I was about to Dick. say, I feel like you could not be so into Moby Dick no. that people screaming around you wouldn't no. make you turn your head. That that's that yeah, no. And I we're mean, librarians. We love to read. We love to like consume stories that's literally my hobby is to consume stories not moby dick no i read <laughs> high school it was torturous all right leah what's your number one reason to watch this movie the number one reason is because i said so you better go and watch this or else i will sick tiny little razor teeth creatures on you it's great like this this movie is just great if you're a fan of jaws if you're a fan of just anything creature like it it's perfect yeah, um, my number of reasons is also because I said so. I mean, I'm surprised at how much underwater photography is in this movie. That is true. Like, it is wild. I and mean, this is a Roger Corman flick. I'm shocked that he spent the money to do underwater photography in 1978. I mean, but no wonder Joe got, Dante got tapped for big movies like The Howling, Gremlins, Inner Space. Um, he could get a lot from a little. 
And it also, yeah. let's see, ruined rivers, pools, and lakes for me <laughs> when I was a kid. Jaws had the oceans covered. Jaws ruled the oceans, but every other body of water, including chlorinated pools, belonged to the piranha. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jesse. And, uh, yeah. I, I will say, I did look up that, because I had a feeling that Jaws was going to, or Universal was going to do something with this film, just because in the very first scene, she's playing Jaws, the arcade game. Oh. And I was like, that's a, that's a nice nod. Well, I forgot about that, yeah. That's yeah. a nice nod, like, thank you. But I did read that Universal tried to sue. Yes, this movie this was movie. made as a Jaws ripoff, but, but it's Steven different Spielberg, enough. Well, yeah. Steven Spielberg watched it and gave it, okay, he apparently loved it, and Universal, like, dropped out. Which is great, because, I mean, that's, that makes a lot of sense, because... Spielberg basically adopted Joe Dante as like, I'm going it's, to produce your movies. Cause I mean, he didn't do anything with the howling. I don't think, but he was involved with gremlins yeah. and other, and even interspace and a lot of other eighties output. Like in twilight zone, the movie was Spielberg did a segment. So like he and Joe Dante were uh, fixed up at the hip for yeah. basically the entire 1980s. And so it makes sense where it's like, I see some talent in you kid. And uh, yeah, I thought that was I thought that was That's really cool. cool. He through the fact, yeah, yeah, he stepped up against Universal Studios. Like, what? Only Steven Spielberg would be able to do that. Be like, hey, back down. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know because I mean? he made them all the money yeah, with Jaws. That's, that's like, what I mean. I mean. Like He had that ability to do that. And, and it's like, if you're mad at him for like ripping off this movie, don't be because he made a really fun he, movie yeah. that does nothing but other than sorry that they, direct people to our movie as well. Exactly. Like, it, and sorry that there's another creature in the water. Like, you can't just be like, oh, there's a creature in the water killing people. Jaws rip off. No, no, no. no. Like, yeah. you can't, mm. can't do that. So, yeah. But anyway. I cool. think I'm going to give you this one. You, you were. I don't know, but you came up with you had that fact. I, I did, did my have research. That fact. So. I, I did do my research. I did enjoy this one. We'll just call, call it a call draw. draw. We'll call it a draw. So head over to Hoopla or Canopy. I mean, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. So pick your service. If you haven't tried Canopy, why not create an account? Maybe catch Piranha on yeah. it. That's a good way to start out your Canopy experience. I think. Absolutely. So, yeah. Either way, you can't go wrong. Piranha's great. <laughs> so do that. And for Live Grindos, I'm Jesse. And I'm Leah. And we'll see you next time. Bye.